Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be amazed! The curtain falls, and Robert Huddleston steps into the arena. The public knew and loved him as the Pony Boy, a true human marvel. The future circus star was born in Missouri around 1895. He had a condition that only occurs in 1 in 100,000 people. It makes the knee joints deform, so the knees can bend backward. In Robert's case, it meant that he wasn't able to stand straight and lived and moved around only on all fours. This peculiarity didn't stop him from living a happy life, though. He went to school with other guys of his age, liked to hike, and milk cows and harvested crops at the family farm. Later on, Huddleston got a job as a logging teamster. He would haul trees and lumber for several miles a day fastened to a wagon. To protect his hands from bush debris and rocks, Robert put small wooden blocks with leather on them. The work wasn't exactly easy, and he soon became famous for his arm and shoulder strength among his colleagues. Huddleston didn't stop there, and later went to work as a blacksmith and carpenter. When times really got hard in the middle of the 20th century, and there wasn't enough work to pay his living, Huddleston decided to display his unique appearance for money. He performed at a small carnival in Texas. He took the stage name of The Pony Boy and quickly became popular. Soon enough, he was touring North America with the Tom Mix Circus, impressing the audience with his strength and super flexibility. After 36 years of performing, the Pony Boy retired and started raising rabbits and restoring cars. And I thought collecting comic books was an unusual hobby. He lived a long and fulfilled life and passed away at the age of 75. People who knew him remembered he was a hardworking and kind fellow. Ella Harper was another star who lived around the same time. She had the same rare condition as the Pony Boy and took the stage name of The Camel Girl. She started traveling with the circus at the age of 12. Ella appeared on the stage on all fours with a camel by her side. She got a really good salary of around $200 at that time. That would be $4,500 when adjusted for inflation. Once she got tired of endless touring at 16, Ella decided to quit the showbiz and study to get a different job. We don't know a lot about her life ever since. It looked like she got married and lived in Tennessee with her husband and mom. Francesco Lentini from Sicily became famous as the three-legged man. He had 11 siblings and actually three legs, four feet. One extra small foot came with his third leg and 16 toes. None of his legs were of the same length. Sadly, his parents refused to take care of Francesco. He was raised by his aunt, who decided to take him to an institution for the young who needed extra attention. There, Lentini met his peers who couldn't walk at all and got motivated to live his life to the fullest. He learned to walk, run, jump rope, skate, and could even ride a bike. When he was 9 years old, Francesco traveled to America with his father. There, they met a professional showman from Italy who believed Lentini could be a success. Just a year later, the three-legged man became one of the most popular acts in the world-famous Ringling Brothers Circus. He made the crowds fall in love with his sense of humor and talents. Lentini managed to kick a soccer ball with his extra limb. People like asking him questions about his routine. You don't get to meet a unique person like this every day, you know. One of the favorite questions was how he managed to buy shoes in sets of three. Francesco would often joke that he just bought two pairs and gave the extra shoe to his friend who was missing a leg. Lentini had a successful career in show business for over 40 years. Barnum & Bailey, Coney Island, he was the star of every major circus in America and performed until his final day. He also got married and had four completely healthy offspring. His colleagues and friends respected him so much that he earned himself a new nickname and went from the three-legged man to the king. Have you ever wondered what the real-life prototype for Beast from Beauty and the Beast could look like? Perhaps you'd recognize him in this man, Fyodor Evtichev. His body produced more hair than other people have, way more, as you can see. His father had the same condition and they were hiding in the woods when some people found them and brought them to a fair. The word spread about them, and the family was soon touring Europe. Fyodor was two or three years old back then. 
Scientists got really interested in the duo. They wanted to know more about their origins, but couldn't find an answer. Adrian, his father, could hardly speak and wanted to run away back to the woods. He was only able to explain that his wife, the boy's mother, was no longer alive. Fyodor, though, managed to learn several languages and charmed people wherever he went. After his father passed away, Fyodor met one of the talent agents from P.T. Barnum. You'll know who it is if you've loved The Greatest Showman as much as I did. Anyway, Barnum, with his outstanding entrepreneurial mindset, noticed the potential in the 16-year-old young man. He helped Jojo, or the dog-faced boy, both became the guy's stage names, turn into a real star. By the way, Barnum was the one who spread the story of how Fyodor was found in the woods, because who doesn't like a good story? So maybe it was only partially true. Jojo worked for Barnum for around 15 years and was one of the highest paid performers on the show. He went on performing around the world till his final day three years later in Greece. Mignon, who became famous as the Penguin Lady, had stunted limbs and fused digits. It made her look like she had flippers, and she even had to waddle instead of walking. It looks like she took the name Mignon early in her career, as it translates from French as cute. She decided that her unique appearance wasn't enough to keep the audience's attention. So Mignon learned to play marimba, an exotic African musical instrument. She was married twice in her life. Her second husband was an acrobat famous as Hoppy the Frog Boy. They had a beautiful showpiece together for almost 10 years. Some performers impressed the crowds not with their unique appearance, but with their unique strength. The Canadian colossus, Louis Cyr, was born larger than most people. At the age of 12, Louis was already strong enough to work as a lumberjack. Five years later, he was 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed over 230 pounds, and could lift a horse off the ground. That was his first public appearance in Boston. Since it was a success, Louis decided to make a living out of it in Canada, his home country. He soon won the unofficial title of the strongest man in the world, lifting a barbell slightly heavier than a kangaroo with one hand. The Canadian Colossus was officially one of the strong men, a term coined in the 19th century to describe people demonstrating outstanding strength. Many stories of their incredible abilities were just legends to impress the crowds, but some were officially confirmed. Here's one. Lewis was able to squat a platform with 18 men on it. Once, he lifted a weight heavier than a reindeer with one finger. Hey, Rudolph's got a summer job! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.